Okay, so good afternoon. I'm Melissa Moore, Public Outreach Coordinator, and on behalf of the South Jersey Transportation Planning Organization, thank you for attending the federal fiscal year 2022 through 2031 Transportation Improvement Program public meeting. I will serve as the moderator for this public meeting, and this meeting is being recorded and will be shared with all of you in a follow-up email. If there are any technical difficulties, we would greatly appreciate if you stayed with us. So as we move forward throughout the presentation, we are going to have a few polling questions. So this first one is more of an icebreaker question and I'm gonna launch it now. And we would like to know if you would rather travel back in time or travel into the future. So you can either select travel back in time, travel into the future or neither. You're fine with the present. And I'll give everyone a few moments to participate in the polling question. Okay, so it looks like most, if not most people presented, um, participated. So I'm gonna close the poll and share those results. And we have a good mix. So I'm glad to see that. I think I would go with the neither I'm fine with the present. So thank you for that. Okay, so a few housekeeping items. SGTPO solicits public participation without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. All attendees are in listen-only mode and will remain in this mode until the question and answer session towards the end of that meeting. And then at that time, if you wish to comment aloud, you can do so using the raise your hand feature and I will unmute you. Or you can, if you prefer to type your questions and your comments, you can use the question box also found in the control panel and staff will be monitoring the box throughout the entire presentation. And it's also important to note that your control panel may, may be minimized. And so to expand the panel, you just simply click the orange arrow, which will allow you to see all engagement functions. So here is an agenda of items we will be going over today and staff members will be presenting their information, which is roughly about a 45 minute presentation. And then afterwards, we will hold the question and answer session for those in attendance today. And as this is a one hour public meeting and we do have a lot to cover, I'll now introduce you to our TIP project team. So as mentioned at the start of the meeting, I am Melissa Laura, and so I prepared all the public outreach materials for the TIP, ensuring that SJTPO is meeting all federal requirements and adequately involving the public. We then have Jason Simmons. Unfortunately, his camera isn't working today, so you won't be able to see him, but he is here. He is one of our three program managers, and he serves as the technical manager for the TIP. We also have Katie Elliott, she works under Jason. So she helped develop the TIP and the TIP project mapping. And then we have David Heller, another program manager, and Dave serves as the technical manager for the transportation conformity document. And last but not least, we have Jennifer Marandino. She serves as the executive director for the organization. So she not only oversees the whole entire organization, but also the TIP and transportation conformity process. So I know we have a few new people here today. So just to go over what SJTPO is, we were formed in 1993 and we are one of three metropolitan planning organizations in New Jersey. MPOs are required in urbanized areas with populations of 50,000 or more. And as a reference, SJTPO has a population of approximately 560,000. SJTPO provides access to federal funds, serves as a technical resource, and works to promote state and federal planning priorities in Atlantic, Cape Bay, Cumberland, and Salem counties. Moving on, the work of SJTPO is guided by the Technical Advisory Committee and the Policy Board, and the TAC is comprised of planners and engineers of SJTPO's member counties, and their collective expertise helps guide the technical activities. 
And then the policy board is comprised of mainly local elected officials of SJTPO's member counties. And then the policy board takes the recommendation of TAC, staff, and the public and makes the final decisions. Moving on to our second polling question of the afternoon. We would just like to know how you became aware of this public meeting. So did you find out through our email list, social media, the website, or other? And if you do select other, we would just appreciate that you put that option in the chat. So maybe you heard through one of our partner organizations or our public meeting flyer. And it looks like people are still voting, so I'll give you a few moments. Okay, so I'm gonna close the poll and share those results. So it looks like the majority found out through our email list, which is always a good thing to know. Okay, so this slide actually shows some of our core products. And these three core products are the Regional Transportation Plan, the Unified Public Work Program, and then the Transportation Improvement Program, also the TIP. And these products are required and form the backbone of SJTPO's process. Now, the RTP creates the long-term vision for SJTPO, planning for a horizon year of 20 years. And the RTP is required to be updated at a minimum cycle of every four years. Now, the UPWP serves as the budget for the organization, identify, identifying funding to support planning efforts that SJTPO will undergo in a given state fiscal year, which is July 1st to June 30th. And then the tip is our list of projects, and that's updated every two years. And Jason will be discussing more of that in his portion of the presentation. And then, although not stated on the slide, we also have the Public Involvement Program, also known as the PIP. And that is a core product, again, outlining the methods and the regulations SJTPO uses to involve the public to the greatest reasonable degree. And I serve as the technical manager for that plan. So that is all for me at the moment, and I will now hand over the presentation to Jason Simmons. Thanks, Melissa. And I, uh, I apologize for my camera not working, but I'll continue to, to work on that. Um, so, you know, thanks for joining us and, <clears throat> you know, to discuss specifically the TIP. Um, what is the Transportation Improvement Program, also known as the TIP? Well, it's a federally required document updated every two years, which details all the federal and state funded surface transportation projects and programs over a specified time period. This particular document is SJTPO's tip for the federal fiscal years 2022 to 2031 that will become effective October 1st of 2021 through September 30th, 2031. Now, whereas the tip includes a list of projects and programs for 10 years, the first four years, in this case, FFY 2022 to 2025, represent what we call as the fiscally constrained tip. And the six additional years are informational. FHWA and FTA are the major funding sources for projects in the tip. In addition, the state of New Jersey provides funds through appropriations, and the Transportation Trust Fund that have been used to fund selected projects. Uh, there are counties, municipalities, private developers, uh, toll road authorities, and other transit operators are also potential sources of project funding. Um, projects are funded under various funding sources dependent upon the type of work to be completed. And we'll touch on this a little further throughout the presentation. Federal law and regulations require that the TIP and the STIP be fiscally constrained for the first four years, meaning that planned federal aid expenditures cannot exceed projected revenues. SJTPO's TIP complements the statewide transportation improvement program, the STIP, and this is for the whole state of New Jersey, which includes um, tip from 
each of the three MPOs, SJTPO, the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission, DVRPC, and the North Jersey Transportation Planning Authority, NJTPA. The TIP, which we refer to as a list of projects, includes regional highway projects and programs, the New Jersey Department of Transportation statewide programs, and New Jersey transit programs, all of which we'll, we'll delve into further. It should be noted though, that the draft STIP is also located on our website for review and comment. And each of the MPOs, uh, other MPOs are holding similar public meetings. So when we re uh, reference the TIP, please recall that SJTPO's TIP is just one of the three that make up the STIP. And that uh, the use of TIP and STIP are often used interchangeably. So the STIP serves two purposes. First, it presents a uh, comprehensive one volume guide to major transportation improvements planned uh, for the, uh, in the state of New Jersey. Secondly, it serves as a reference document required under federal regulations for use by the Federal Highway Administration and Federal Transit Administration in approving expenditures of federal funds uh, for transportation projects in New Jersey. So the, in, uh, in developing the TIP, it often begins as far out as a year uh, prior to the expected date of the TIP adoption. And this graphic, um, as you can see, is there's a lot of work that kind of goes into this and the development requires uh, really close collaboration. This uh, SJTPO, we collaborate with our sub-regional planning partners. This includes Atlanta County, Atlantic City, uh, Cape May County, Cumberland County, Salem County, and the city of Vineland. Additionally, we coordinate with uh, various state agencies, tribal nations, and you, the public. At the beginning of this uh, TIP development cycle, we work with our sub-regional county and municipal partners to identify and prioritize projects for the TIP project pool. And we use the project evaluation process for this, which we'll, we'll talk about next. During this time, we also work with NJDOT's uh, capital programming staff to forecast the availability of federal funding over the 10-year period of the TIP. SJTPO then works with uh, NJDOT, New Jersey Transit, and the other New Jersey MPOs to compile the draft STIP. So the TIP and STIP is really a product of months of staff work and deliberations involving many regional groups and providing agencies, such as New Jersey DOT, New Jersey Transit, county and municipal transportation planners and engineers, the public and um, elected officials at the state. So as I just mentioned, SJTPO utilizes a project evaluation process to advance projects in what we call the project pool. This project pool is what eventually compiles um, the list of projects. And this process, um, the evaluation process revolves around two central components, a pre-evaluation screening, and then a criteria and scoring. As part of the pre-evaluation process, SJTPO will assess projects to address opportunities to enhance them, to better meet federal, state, and regional guidance targets and priorities. So in addition to a, a desk review of the project, uh, this assessment also includes a site visit by SJTPO staff to the project location to better understand the context of the project. The pre-evaluation screening process, which evaluates projects, seeks to actively encourage improvements that will uh, better align the project with regional, state, and federal guidance and priorities, including uh, complete streets, environmental justice, um, as, as, as well as others, as noted on this slide. The second component of this evaluation process includes uh, using project evaluation criteria and scoring. 
this is to evaluate projects in terms of how they match up to um, various performance-based planning uh, processes and our regional transportation planning goals and <laughs> SJTPO planning initiatives. So the criteria component of the process is broken up into various sections as seen on this slide. And <clears throat> these are tallied and a score is created for each project. SJTPO staff utilizes uh, our, our professional judgment in applying these planning level criteria, evaluation criteria. And the final score is a re is, uh, reflects the adherence of projects to federal, state, and SGA, SJTPO planning priorities and mandates. So there's a lot of information. You can learn more about the process on our website. So the end, the end result of this uh, project evaluation process and coordination with our sub-regional partners, uh, New Jersey DOT, New Jersey Transit, FHWA, FTA, and others is the draft transportation improvement program for federal fiscal years 2022 to 2031. So not only does the TIP include um, the list of projects, it also contains the project evaluation that we just uh, that we just discussed. It, it contains a section on performance-based planning, transportation conformity, and a financial plan, all critical components. Um, I'm now going to hand it over to uh, Dave Heller, and he's going to give us some more information on the performance-based planning and uh, the transportation conformity process. Okay. Thank you, Jason. So in the past several years, federal legislation, including MAP 21, and continuing with the FAST Act, has placed an increasing emphasis on performance-based planning. Performance-based planning applies performance management principles to transportation system policy and investment decisions with the intent of strengthening the linkage between policies and long-range decisions and specific transportation investments in the system. In a performance-based planning process, a strong emphasis is placed on measurable outcomes of transportation investments. To guide agencies in carrying out performance-based planning, the USDOT has issued five specific rules for mandating the establishment of specific, specific performance management measures and targets. FHWA administers rules covering safety, pavement and bridge conditions, and system performance, while FTA administers rules governing transit asset management and public transportation safety, as is depicted on the slide. SJTPO is required to set its own targets or support the state's targets for each of the measures mandated by these rules, which it has done. The specific targets, as well as progress towards meeting the targets, are listed in Appendix B of the TIP. Projects in the TIP are selected in part to help meet goals and targets mandated by these performance rules. In addition to TIP projects adhering to the performance measures and targets, as I just described, pursuant to federal regulations, the TIP is also subject to a stringent air quality test in a complex process known as transportation conformity. Just to add a little bit, back, a little bit more background, in the interest of protecting public health and as part of the Clean Air Act, the US EPA has established formal air quality standards for six criteria pollutants. The SJTPO region is in non-attainment for ozone, one of these six criteria pollutants with mandated standards under the Clean Air Act. This means that the ambient air quality standards for ozone, which basically refers to the outside surrounding air, falls beneath the national ambient air quality standards for ozone as set by the US EPA. Breathing in air that contains high levels of ozone can be harmful to one's health, particularly those with asthma, children, older adults, and people who spend a lot of time outdoors. The region is in attainment for the other five criteria pollutants. However, because the SJTBO region is in non-attainment for one of the criteria pollutants, ozone, it is still subject to transportation conformity. 
These rules mandate that all future projects and programs in the TIP and the Regional Transportation Plan will not violate existing standards. In other words, they must conform to the existing air quality standards. This is demonstrated through a complex emissions modeling process that projects future vehicular emissions and compares them against pre-established emissions budgets. Indeed, the results of the transportation conformity determination for the FY 2022 TIP do show that the projected emissions of all future projects and programs from our FY 2022 TIP are well below the emissions budgets, thereby allowing all these projects to proceed without delay. A more detailed explanation of the process, as well as the results, is included as part of the Transportation Conformity Determination document, which is Appendix A of the TIP. Okay, thanks, Steve. So I'm going to pop in with our next polling question, which is sort of like a, a pop quiz, because Jason did mention this. But we would like to know, does the TIP need to be fiscally constrained? So you can either select yes, no, or I'm not sure. And people are still voting, so I'll get a, give it a few more moments. Okay, so it looks like the majority of everyone voted, so I'm gonna close the poll and share the results. So it, it's kind of a mixed bag here, but 57% said yes, and that is true. And Jason will now talk more about it, I'm sure. Great, thanks, Melissa. So indeed, uh, the tip does have to be fiscally constrained. And one of the mechanisms that we show that is in the financial plan, one of the key elements of the TIP. Federal planning regulations require the TIP to be, uh, to TIP to contain a financial plan that demonstrates how the TIP will be implemented. It must indicate the resources from public and private sources that are reasonably expected to be made um, and any recommendations for innovative financing techniques to fund needed projects and programs. So in tables one through five in the TIP and STIP, they list all of the expenditures and resources for both New Jersey DOT and New Jersey Transit, while table six uh, shows the overall distribution of those funds within the STIP by MPO. <clears throat> Tables 7, 8, 9, and 10 provide a detailed breakdown of expenditures by funding category for each of the three MPOs and for statewide programs. Um, it's important to remember uh, that in accordance with the requirements in the federal legislation, federal expenditures in the first four years of the TIP are strictly constrained to expected funding. So as I just mentioned, the first four years of the TIP and STIP are physically constrained and the following six are informational. This is important to emphasize because programming costs and decisions are made based on these amounts. FHWA, FTA are the major funding sources for projects in the TIP, which can be seen, you know, are reflected in this table. In addition, the state of New Jersey provides funds through appropriations and the Transportation Trust Fund, TTF, that have been used to fund selected projects. Um, based on the current federal authorizi authorizing legislation, the FAST Act, and program authority set by Congress, uh, New Jersey DOT has estimated uh, $8.9 billion have been programmed for the state during the first four years of the STIP. And New Jersey Transit has an estimated uh, $6.1 billion program during that same time period. So collectively, between uh, New Jersey DOT and New Jersey Transit, there's approximately uh, $553 million programmed within the SJTPO four-county region. 
Now, just a note uh, of that 553 million, SJTPO is only uh, directly allocated a small portion of those funds for programming uh, to local lead projects, which we'll discuss in, in greater detail. The full 10 year STIP programming total is estimated to be uh, $38 billion. Now, this amount constitutes the funding expected to be made available to support the full 10 years of the STIP. These revenue estimates were developed uh, cooperatively by New Jersey DOT, New Jersey Transit, and New Jersey's three MPOs in full consultation with FHWA and FTA at a meeting held earlier this year. So let's just break that table um, that we've just referred to down a little bit further. Of the 10, of the full 10 year step programming total of 38 billion, you'll note here that New Jersey, New Jersey DOT has over 800 million programmed over the next 10 years in our four county region, while New Jersey Transit has 478 million programmed. This funding is programmed through uh, various project categories, uh, including infrastructure preservation, operations and maintenance, and others as mentioned uh, on the slide. So if you refer to table nine in the tip, uh, it will show the resources that New Jersey DOT and New Jersey Transit have allocated uh, to the SJTPO region for the next 10 years, uh, which totals just over $1.3 billion of that larger 38 billion. So let's, let's delve in just a little bit further in, into that. Um, how, how do these projects and programs, um, you know, how are they listed in the tip? So section two, you know, as indicated on this slide is the regional highway section, which includes projects or programs that are specifically within the SJTPO region, including those sponsored by New Jersey DOT. Um, there's also, um, <clears throat> this also includes uh, projects within, from the counties in the SJTPO region, and those will be listed as locally led and this section two also includes programs uh, sponsored by New Jersey DOT. Uh, in section three, as noted on the slide, has the statewide projects and programs. These, that, that I'm sorry, that are um, New Jersey DOT statewide projects and programs, um, those include funded, uh, they're statewide, um, but the funding listed in the TIP is specifically allocated to the SJTPO region. And lastly, as the name implies, is under Section 4 is New Jersey Transit Projects and Programs. These include projects and programs led by New Jersey Transit, with the funding listed specifically allocated to the SJTPO region. So these three lists demonstrate how the resources are uh, being allocated throughout the region and it represents the majority of the funding available to the SJTPO region. So to get a closer look at the local led projects and how funding is allocated to SJTPO, I'm going to hand it over to Katie Elliott. Thank you, Jason. Um, so as previously mentioned, um, NJDOT and NJ Transit funds, for the most part, are not touched by us at SJTPO and are programmed directly by NJDOT and NJ Transit. Um, the three exceptions to these are CMAC, Safety slash HSIP, and STBGP funds. I mean, these are programs from which we are allocated funds to distribute to our subregions for their transportation projects. And this is based on certain criteria that determine which type of funding they may be eligible for. These programs are what you could call our bread and butter at SJTPO because we are so involved in allocating these funds to various projects. And I'll be talking about each of these funding categories in more detail in the next few slides. 
Um, so first is the STBGP or Surface Transportation Block Grant Program. Um, this is our primary funding source and is approximately $11.9 million a year distributed by the state of New Jersey. Allocations vary by year for this program based on funding availability. So this number does change a little bit each year. SJTPO then distributes this funding to subregions based on cost and scope of proposed projects. Um, and this follows the selection and evaluation criteria that Jason mentioned earlier. Most projects put forth by subregions and funded with SJTPO allocation dollars are funded at least in part by this block grant program. These projects are referred to as local led projects because the local county or town leads the implementation of their funded project. And funding from this program is distributed to subregions based on project needs and the further breakdown of the STBGP into urbanized areas. And um, so the map on this slide shows how um, those urbanized areas are broken down in the um, SJTPO region. And so STBGP funding that SJTPO has programming authority over includes three uh, different areas. Um, so shown in green is the Atlantic City urbanized area. Um, there's areas with a population between 5,000 and 200,000, which are shown in orange, and areas with a population of less than 5,000, which are shown in light gray. Um, you'll notice that most of the SJTPO region falls in this less than 5,000 area, but that does not mean that less than 5,000 gets the majority of the block grant funding. Funding is not distributed equally among these sub allocations, but is instead divided with an amount that must be spent in that area. The funding amount for the Atlantic City urbanized area is set every year at about 4 million, and the rest of the funding is divided between the between 5K and 200K and the less than 5K areas. Um, so this shows a list of the local led projects that are funded with the block grant funds. Um, and these are all between federal fiscal year 2022 and 2025. Um, this slide includes projects in Atlantic City, Atlantic County, and half of the projects in Cape May County. Um, and the rest of the projects in the region continue on the next slide. Um, two projects here have funding types listed other than STBGP, um, which you'll notice in the funding column. Um, these are additional resources made available to SJTPO by and JDOT. Um, the first is in Atlantic City. This is Atlantic Avenue, Albany to Tennessee. Um, and this uses highway infrastructure funds. Um, and the second on this slide is in Atlantic County. This is Tilton Road Section 7. Um, and this is using additional COVID funding distributed to urbanized areas. The majority of these projects are um, resurfacing of the surface road um, with various enhancements and safety measures. And when roads are resurfaced, the goal is always to improve the road segment as a whole and not just to repave. One of these typical projects is Brigantine Avenue in Atlantic County. This is resurfacing of two sections of Brigantine Avenue in need of safety improvements, and they're connected at uh, Second Street. Um, so you'll notice the first one is the stretch of Brigantine Avenue from Second Street to the terminus of the road, and then Brigantine Avenue from 29th Street to Second Street. Um, it's very common for larger projects to be to be split up into sections or phases like this. Um, the primary reason for splitting a project is, um, can, this is ugh, excuse me, <laughs> um, is a constrained budget um, and just the amount of funding that is available for each year. And so this slide just continues um, our list of the local lead projects. Um, this includes the rest of KMA County projects and projects in the city of Vineland, Cumberland County, and Salem County. Um, and the second project on this slide with additional COVID funding, and the third um, that I mentioned before that's not funded by the block grant, is the resurfacing of Landis Avenue in Cape May County. Um, so similar to Tilton Road in Atlantic County on the previous slide, this project was recently selected for these additional funds. Um, the second project our program that I'll be highlighting is the CMAC program. Um, this is another funding source that SJTPO programs, um, and this is the Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Improvement Program. So CMAC funds and the HSIP program that's coming up are line items in the TIP, 
and they were not included in the previous local led project chart. SJTPO's annual allocation for this program is 1.9 million a year. This allocation is the same each year and it's the total amount that can be distributed to projects chosen from the applicant pool during project solicitation. Many types of projects are eligible for CMAC funds as long as they reduce harmful emissions in the region, either directly like converting to low emission vehicles or indirectly, um, such as tra traffic signal improvements that improve the vehicle flow and reduce congestion. This program, as well as HSIP, has a different set of selection and evaluation criteria than the ones that Jason mentioned earlier. A more comprehensive list of projects that are eligible for CMAC funds, as well as more information on project selection and the CMAC program, uh, can be found on the SJTPO webpage that's listed at the top of this slide. Um, so as mentioned on the previous slide, the annual allocation for the CMAC program is 1.9 million. And the projects highlighted here are ones that have been selected for CMAC funding between federal fiscal year 2022 and 2024. The total amount allocated here over those years is 4.45 million. And since CMAC is a line item, again, you will not see these projects listed individually in this way in the TIP document. These projects include signal synchronization, enhancements for bike travel, and vehicle replacements with more emissions-friendly vehicles. Um, a good example of a CMAC project is the Ventnor Avenue signal synchronization in Atlantic County. This project has design and construction split over two different years. Um, this is using CMAC funds for both phases, and it will optimize a string of intersection signals along Ventnor Avenue to reduce traffic and idling time. Um, and the last program I'll highlight is the local safety program. And local safety funds are funded through the Highway Safety Improvement Program, or HSIP. SJTPO's annual allocation for HSIP funds is two million. And like CMAC, HSIP is a line item in the TIP, and you will not see individual projects listed. The purpose of the HSIP funding is to achieve a significant reduction in fatalities and serious injuries on all public roads through a data-driven strategic approach to improving highway safety. And this includes roadways on and off the federal aid system, regardless of ownership. Project locations must typically sele be selected from either one of five network screening locations or using the geometric traits of the location. And you can find more details on network screening lists and information on it, it on HSIP on the SJTPO website that's listed at the top of this slide. Um, so this slide includes a list of the local safety program um, projects. Um, again, like I said before, the annual allocation for HSIP is $2 million. Um, the total for these projects here, which are between federal fiscal year 2022 and 2024, is $6.86 um, And a typical project for um, the local safety program is Salem County Roundabout six points. Um, this is a large project that will improve safety countermeasures at a six-point intersection in Salem County um, using a roundabout. So you might be wondering how all this information that we've been talking about for TIP projects will be displayed. Um, so this is how a TIP project sheet will look in the TIP document. Um, and these can be found starting on page 51 of the TIP. Um, and all of the funding mentioned here um, are allocated to projects or line items. Um, so I'll walk through an example here um, and how you can understand the information that's on this slide. Um, so first we have just some basic information about the project. This includes the name, the database number, and the county, municipality, sponsor, that type of thing. Um, so this is pretty basic information. Um, you might just be looking for you know, of course, the name of the project and where it's located. Um, and the sponsor might be the same as the county or municipality, but this is just um, the jurisdiction that is managing and advancing the project. Um, next, we have the description. Um, so again, pretty straightforward. This gives you more details on um, what is actually happening with the project. So it might be milling and repaving. There might be some drainage changes. Um, or upgrades, um, that sort of thing. 
Um, next, we have the mile post. Um, and so not um, every project will have a mile post, so programs won't have a mile post listed, um, but this gives you um, the exact starting and ending point of the project. So you'll notice this one is Baltic Avenue um, from Maine to Missouri, um, but the mile post will give you the exact starting and ending point rather than just those intersections. Um, and next we have the phase fund type and the actual programming amount, amount of money. Um, so the phase will include um, design, construction, right of way, anything like that. Um, projects are broken out into phases like that. Um, it'll also show you the funding type that's being used for each of those phases. Um, so you'll notice this one is the STBGP in um, the Atlantic City urbanized area. Um, and then lastly, of course, the funding amount is just the amount of money that's um, available or being programmed for each of those phases of the project. And then there's everything else that's on the slide. Um, so this includes legislative district structure, um, different categories that the project is in based on the type of project that it is. Um, and I just wanna highlight the um, AQ code really quickly. Um, this is um, uh, what Dave mentioned earlier. This is assigned to a project based on um, conformity. Um, and these last few items are not what you might typically be looking for um, if you're looking up a project, um, but more information can be found in the tip glossary and appendices. Um, so you can um, find out more information about what's included on here. Um, and you know, this is a lot more uh, information that's on this slide than how it looked when we when we started. Um, so a copy of this annotated tip sheet can be found on page 27 of the tip. Um, and feel free to use this as you're looking through projects that are included in the document. Um, and I'll pass it back to Jason for the last few slides. Thanks, Katie. Um, so. I'm gonna take a moment just to, to note that the TIP is not a static document. Rather, it's what we often refer to as a living document in the, in the planning profession. Um, in between the TIP years, as you might imagine, there's changes to projects and programs that occur, and these require modifications to either the TIP or STIP. This process is carried out through the TIP amendment process. And the changes uh, can be initiated by any of the MPOs, New Jersey DOT or New Jersey Transit. So under a memorandum of understanding with our planning partners, there have, uh, we've set out uh, a set of parameters for what type of action requires what level of approval. So, a major amendment would require the policy board approval, where a minor amendment uh, could be done through committee action, which is carried out by our, our TAC. And most other uh, modifications can be executed by uh, the executive director. So on our website, uh, we have an update, a tip tracker, which is posted so that as modifications happen to the TIP or STIP, you can follow along and see all of those changes. So um, on our TIP website, we have a lot more information about the amendment process um, and also the TIP tracker. So as I mentioned at the very beginning of this presentation, uh, SJTPO New Jersey uh, DOT and New Jersey Transit and others have been working on this um, on this document, the TIP, for some time now. In October of 2020, we began the solicitation period with our uh, sub-regional partners to gather potential projects for the inclusion in the TIP. This, uh, the requested projects from the sub-regional partners were then screened to verify scope, status, schedule and cost. In January of 2021, we met again to discuss the uh, draft project pool for accuracy. 
Later that month, we held a resource meeting to determine the available funding. Once that budget was set, we continued to work with our sub-regional partners to develop a fiscally constrained list of projects, which is now um, what is shown in the draft tip. Then uh, on July 7th, we released SJTPO's tip and have been working to ensure that the public is aware and has the opportunity to comment. Uh, DVRPC and NJTPA, as mentioned, are also in the process of taking public comment on their tips, for which um, will, be, will become the STIP. This is uh, anticipated to be approved at the uh, September um, 2021 board meeting. Okay, great. So I will be taking over this slide. So the public comment period ends on Monday, August 9th. And after, after that time, the staff will review and respond to all comments. And our formal responses, along with those comments, will be provided in the final plan. And then on Monday, September 13th, the tip will be brought to the TAC for recommendation of policy board approval. And if approved by members of the TAC, the TIP will be reviewed and voted on at the Monday, September 27th policy board meeting. And afterwards, the TIP, along with the transportation conformity document, will be submit, submitted to NJDOT, with NJDOT then submitting the documents to FHWA, FTA, and EPA. And then those agencies will review and vote on the approval of the documents in about October of this year. So we, staff, we're done our, our portion of the presentation and we will now look forward to answering answering any questions that you may have. And I just want to reiterate that you can either type your questions in the question box or use the raise your hand feature and you will be unmuted. So let me see if we have any sort of questions. We do have one. This one is for Dave and we would like to know, or this person would like to know rather, do all projects improve air quality? Okay, uh, thank you for the question. That's a good question. So um, some, I, the best answer I think, some but not all projects improve air quality. Uh, projects that improve traffic flow, such as the synchronized traffic signals um, at, that Katie talked about in Ventnor Avenue or a roundabout, a roundabout also, you know, that were planned for Salem County, will like will likely improve air quality because they improve the flow of traffic and also reduce the amount of time that vehicles spend idling. Uh, as most of you probably know, when vehicles are idling, they tend to emit a lot more emissions. On the other hand, uh, a roadway resurfacing project, as many of our projects are, is likely to have a minimal impact on air quality. Um, while roadway widening project may have a negative impact on air quality because uh, of the induced traffic. So uh, again, thanks for the question. Hopefully um, I've answered it. Okay, perfect. Um, one more question. Why does Cumberland County only have one project on the local lead chart, but the other subregions have multiple? So let me just make sure that I go to the correct slide for that one, just so. And Katie, you want to take this one? Yeah, thank you, Melissa. Um, thank you for the question. Um, so Cumberland County um, chose to group their projects under this one heading that's in the chart. So Cumberland County Federal Road Program. Um, and so under this one heading, um, there's three or four projects per year or you know, three or four roadway sections that they have. Um, that are then authorized and updated, um, just like any other project. Um, so it looks like they have one project, but they actually have between three, four, maybe five um, for each year on here. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing one more question, and this one is gonna actually go to Jason. So on the TIP funding slide, the table indicates funding for, the S for SJTPO as 17 mil million um, in the first four years, but you said that SJTPO allocates 
allocation is 11.9 million per year, excuse me. What is the cause of the difference? And if you need to, me to repeat that, I will, but um, let me go to the slide. Yeah, if you go to the slide, the table, that'd be helpful. Yeah, okay. So for anyone that didn't catch it, uh, just about halfway down on the left-hand side, there's FHWA, STVGP, dash SJTPO. And it's just over 17 million. What that line item specifically is re, uh, referring to is the Atlantic City Urbanized Funds, which is just over uh, $4 million per year, totaling the 17.1. Um, and then you'll see just under that, uh, conveniently, is the S S T S T B G P statewide. And under that program, New Jersey DOT provides um, SJTPO with the additional obligation authority uh, from its own limited resources. And those are allocated to the region under an arrangement with New Jersey DOT. That funding is the, uh, the pot of funds that we're able to program in um, those different STBGP areas that Katie had talked about, that between 5,000 and 200,000 and the less than 5,000. So without that, um, without that additional funding that uh, New Jersey DOT has for us or for SJTPO, um, the only money that's, um, I guess, in the in the formula is for the Atlantic City urbanized area. So hopefully it, it, get, it starts getting complicated when you um, try to delve into how the different pots of funding are allocated, um, but hopefully that answers your question. Okay, thank you. I'll just bring it back to our current slide. Okay, so I'm not seeing any more questions at this time. So rather than hold anything up, I think we can get to our next polling question and our final polling question, actually. And we would like to know if you found this meeting helpful. So you can say it was very helpful, somewhat helpful, neither helpful nor unhelpful, somewhat unhelpful or very unhelpful. And any advice that you have, please leave it in the chat. Uh, this is our final tip meeting, but I'm sure we will have more meetings in the future, whether they're virtual or in person, that's to be determined. Okay, so I'm gonna close the poll now. And of those that participated, they said it was very helpful. So thank you for that. Let me go back to if we have any more questions. So I'm not seeing any at this time. So let me just go, go on to our last slide and then I can always check to see if we have any more before, before letting you all go. So the information on this slide is available on the SJTPO website at www.sjtpo.org slash tip and has been shared via public notice in area newspapers and the public information email list. We also have several ways in which members of the public can submit comments outside of the public meetings, and that includes emailing tip at sjtpo.org. And then when visiting the webpage, the TIP webpage to be more specific, you will see a, a comment form located at the bottom of the webpage. And that's another simple way to get in contact with staff. I already made mention to this, but I think it's worth noting again that comments are, um, we're, we're accepting comments through Monday, August 9th. And if you or anyone you know is looking to view a physical copy of the TIP, please know that you may visit the SJTPO office, county planning offices, and even uh, the reference section of participating state depository libraries. And I know that's kind of a funky term, uh, so we made sure to list those libraries on the TIP webpage for easy reference. Uh, we do recommend calling ahead um, just because it's a public facility and we know that COVID-19 protocols may be different from place to place. So not only will the 
the meeting be shared with all of you some point tomorrow, but it'll also be on our YouTube channel probably by the end of the week. So that's pretty much all I have to say, but let me just check to make sure I'm not missing any questions. I see that Jen added stuff to the chat, so be sure to look at those links. Um, but we don't have any more questions. So again, we are welcoming comments until Monday, August 9th. And with that, thank you for attending our virtual public meeting for the tip, and we hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye.